would uh, like to introduce uh, Stan Larocque. Uh, Stan Larocque is a CEO uh, of uh, Lynx, uh, it's a company in, uh, in Paris, in France, but I don't think he's located in Paris right now. Um, so I met Stan for the first time uh, at the ODC, uh, the Optical Design uh, um, uh, Challenge, which was part of the um, uh, Photonics Europe conference in 2018, I think. And uh, he was one of the laureates of this uh, Optical Design Challenge, uh, which was part of the SPAE AR VR MR uh, uh, event, uh, which originated there. Uh, we're going to have again this uh, ODC Challenge next year. We couldn't do it this year because it's online. Uh, so I'm super proud to, um, to introduce you, um, uh, uh, Stan, uh, especially as uh, his career um, as an entrepreneur started after uh, having uh, been recognized as a, a, as a laureate uh, at our uh, optical design challenge uh, contest um, uh, at uh, Photonics uh, Europe many years ago, well, many years, it was uh, three or four years ago. And since then, uh, he wants to define a complete new uh, product, uh, which you'll see is very different from, uh, from uh, any other uh, VR headset. Um, and also uh, raise, raise the capital. And I think he has uh, 16 employees now in France. So um, Stan, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Bernard. Okay. So um, yeah, so I, I created a company named Lynx. You might have heard of that and what we are doing. Basically, we're doing a mixed reality platform and we started the platform with hardware because we, we like to do hard things. Um, just so you know who is talking to you, um, I founded the company, like Bernard said, three years ago. We are located in Paris and we have a very cool office where we do all kinds of evaluation and prototyping and we have uh, we have some very good teammates that you know uh, were in the industry for a few years some of them 15 20 years and uh, we have some of the engineers that made the star vr headset maybe you remember that vr headset it was a 200 degrees field of view uh fresnel lens uh, based vr headset it was pretty cool but didn't make it to the market but some of my teammates are, are working on links today and we're from that company. We have some very big partners like Qualcomm for the chipset or NVIDIA for Cludixor. I'm going to talk about that, obviously. And especially we have very great support and enthusiasm from the community. So I'm thanking everyone here with, you know, listening to this talk. Um, I'm really, you know, very glad uh, that this community is, you know, still a little bit small and we get to know each other. So thank you for that. Thank you for all the help that anyone really provided me at some point. So yeah, I wanted to, to thank, uh, you know, who you are and uh, yeah, thank you. So what we, when I started working on, on VR and AR, um, I, I saw that, you know, we, the enterprise market was getting mature. The, the people in enterprise were more educated than uh, of having a VR headset on than, you know, the consumer uh, because Facebook, you know, the Quest was not even here at the time. And uh, so the only use case we could see that were serious were in the enterprise market. And in that market, you know, the demand of the user is really, really high, both in VR and AR. And I was thinking about making a product to address both use cases because there were no devices on the market that can do that. So what, what you're seeing today, you, you, you have en uh, enterprise you know, companies that they're buying one or two HoloLens, they're buying some HTC here, some Oculus there. You have a bunch of devices, IT is completely mad. Uh, they don't, they, they, they're not, don't have the same SDK, they don't have the same platform. It's a mess. Uh, and the developer is starting to get headaches and the user, they have to, you know, um, take in consideration all these different headsets and limitations. So we're trying to address that, that, you know, by delivering, you know, like the value proposition of links is, you know, to have a unique product. Um, and for AR, I really like this, this sentence, you know, uh, for AR, it's, it's a very heavy waveguide conference, but there, there is also a bird bath and all these kind of optical architectures. And there is no true solution for the AR consumer market, right? So it's very exciting. 
and uh, I took a complete, you know, opposite approach that was much simpler on the paper uh, and also much, much cheaper to manufacture, which is video see-through. So Lynx, Lynx is the first untethered 5G compatible mixed reality HMD targeting all enterprise use cases. So we are closing the gap between AR and VR because we're, we have two very high definition cameras uh, in front of the headset. And actually I have a prototype with me here. Um, and you, you, you can see on my little screen in Zoom, the two cameras here with a large um, aperture and the you know, two tracking cameras here. But we are doing the, the see-through with RGB because you know, we, we tend to use colors as humans. So it's, it's much better. And um, we faced many challenges along the road. So this is something you might have seen online uh, it's a video we put on YouTube a few weeks ago, which is uh, a real shot through the lens with a GoPro through the left eye of, of this device, actually. It was exactly this headset. And what's very interesting, I think, in this video is the left portion of the video where you have the peripheral vision and we are trying to align that, you know, the best we can with the, the virtual field of view at the center. And also something you can notice is that we have a 90 degrees field of view, which is not a lot for VR, right? But it's, it's amazing for AR. Um, so we're, I think we, 90 degrees is a sweet spot for both use cases because you, you, as you can see on your screen, you know, uh, I think you have the presence of the holograms that are um, really there and the, the colors and the opacity. And we, you know, we can do crazy things that AR people are dreaming like black and shadows and, you know, uh, so video see-through has its pros and it was very hard to do, especially for the latency and also this, you know, peripheral vision stuff of the tunnel vision of the VR headset. And we tried to address that with version one. I'm not saying it's perfect, but for version one, we are very, very proud of uh, what, what our small team uh, did. Okay, um, so as I told you, it's mobile. You have also hand tracking. We're working on hand tracking with uh, Ultralip. And we have eye tracking as well. I'm gonna talk about that later with the, the lens. And yeah, it's a new optical architecture. You might, you might have seen it online, but we are using a, you know, a catadioptric lens, which is a, you know, it's, it's a big lens, but we have a shorter optical path. Uh, we have a shorter, you know, distance between the eye and the screen, which, which is very important for a video see-through headset because you want the camera to be as close as your eyes as possible. So you can have the lowest parallax possible and make a good alignment of the peripheral vision and, and what's, what's in the middle. And for that, for we designed today, we're going to almost be everything, I would say, or, and when we, not, when we do not we do not do the design. We work with the best people on the planet. For for example, the chipset is from Qualcomm. The hand tracking is from Ultralip. Uh, the lens, the object itself is from Limbach, which is one of the best companies in the world for doing, uh, I would say, um, high-end optical design. You can check them online. Pablo is very involved in SPAE as well. Uh, they're very friendly. They, they're in Spain, so it's not, not so far from Paris. And we solve everything with these people. We design all the electronics. We design the optical blocks as well. So I have one with me. You can see on the camera. This is the this is the the optical block uh, with the lens and our display. And we are putting we are putting two of these here. You know, uh, for the imagery of the of the headset. And what's very cool is that everything in the, in this headset is very cheap because it's using the smartphone supply chain and the lenses are molded and they're between six and seven dollars you know for for our production which is an order, uh, an order of magnitude lower than waveguides or other diffractive optics right now and we're in a very mature ecosystem we're a small startup but you know there are, there is qualcomm there is compound that is making the device with us there is all these distributors and integrators that are waiting for this device. So I'm very excited and I can't wait, you know, to, to put the device out uh, in the wild uh, very soon. Also on the ec ecosystem, the ecosystem is getting mature. Uh, I can talk about Unity because there are many developers, but I'm more excited about OpenXR because I think we'll see a unification of, you know, all the SDK 
uh, of the players that will in integrate OpenXR in their runtime. So for example, if you develop an application for Lynx, you can as well run on HoloLens and, and uh, on the contrary, you can use your HoloLens app in Lynx. And if the devices have kind of the same capabilities, I think we are gonna see uh, you know, cross-platform experiences very soon. So they're offering, you know, like the Microsoft Mesh thing or the Lenovo platform that Mike just talked about. Uh, I think it's going to be really interesting to see, you know, like multiple devices in the same environment, um, maybe not in the same place, but on the cloud. And uh, I can't wait to see that, you know, for the collaboration aspect of the use cases. So we are trying to check all the boxes, except the price. I think Oculus is doing a, a very good job, but uh, it's a different device. You know, they're just doing VR and they're focused on consumer. They're doing a very good job here. But again, we are targeting enterprise. We have a very good field of view, and I think we are the perfect device to address mixed reality use cases. Um, all the IPs in Paris, as I told you, we have patents in optics, electronics, also industrial design. We have two very good industrial designers that made a headset. And if you want to come and see the headset, of course you can. I also brought with me uh, a transparent one if you want to, to see what's inside. So let's talk about very quickly about the lens and the eye tracking uh, because it's a very interesting subject. So what you're going to see is a video where the gaze of the user is following the sphere in AR and you're, you're going to see how we recombine all the different parts of the display so we can enlarge the eye box and put the, the, the pixels where you need them the most. Okay, so the video crashed. Okay, let me try again. Aha, it's working. So, you're gazing at the sphere and the center of the distortion is moving in the opposite direction. So uh, this is how we are doing passive foveated rendering and the pixel interlacing is, I mean, the super resolution of the lens and, and the quadrants where you need the most display is effective in the direction you're looking at. I think it's really interesting. And we, we worked a lot, you know, to have that render at 90 frames per second in AR, you know, so with 90 frames per second cameras as well, it was really hard to achieve on the on the mobile, you know, even with the XR2 chipset, it, you know, we had to make tons of optimization uh, to have that running and with the low latency. So this is a, 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 my right eye in the eye tracker uh, we, we, we developed. Okay, so the video crashed again. Let me go back. So this is this is what the the camera you know near the lens is is seeing from your your pupil, and we're estimating where you're looking at, and this is how we you know we recombine the display on screen to get uh, the the best resolution uh, we can get from the, the the lens architecture. So it's clean based, and there is a, a neural network with it. Also a quick word about the VR mode and hand tracking. Of course you can do VR with the headset and this is a, a preview of the launcher we're gonna, we are going to deliver with, with Lynx and it, we are making that with Ultraleap and their designers are making an incredible job you know, to have all these hand tracking perks where everything is, is working very naturally. And we made the bet to go with hand tracking first. Of course it will be compa it's compatible with third parties controllers for, you know, for enterprise application like design review where you need, you need to move things precisely, but it's a hands first mobile headset. And I think it's interesting. It was very challenging in the interaction and the interface. And uh, we, we have great partners working on that. So I can't wait for, for you to, to try the, the, the launcher and all the demo application we are going to, to deliver with that. So the main use case, what we are seeing from uh, customers that are uh, pre-ordering the headsets is guided instruction and training. And when you look at that, it's basically the same use case you're seeing with Unreal Enterprise or HoloLens and now Magic Leap because they're on, on Enterprise now. Um, so nothing new here. We don't have like a new magical use case. I think we'll see cool applications like very, you know, like game studios trying to, to do some uh, uh, 
um, location-based events with four headsets, but nothing really looking at the consumer market for now. So this is what we have in plan, you know, what we have in store. The Q3 for, of this year, we'll see the, the first batch of links manufactured. Uh, we have devices that you can try already, and I'm going to talk about that uh, uh, at, the, at the end. Um, so yeah, so this thing is real. And, and as you might see, it's, uh, we are based in France, but right now uh, it's daylight. So I'm not really in the office or at home. Um, and uh, I, I flew to, to Silicon Valley um, a few days ago. So now I am in Silicon Valley. I am in San Francisco. I can move everywhere in California. I have devices with me and uh, you know, uh, I'm doing a, a fundraising. So this is why uh, I moved and it's not my home. Uh, <laughs> the, the funny thing is that I, I'm, um, I'm at a Palmer Lucky house and he, he's helping me on that. And it, so things are <laughs> very exciting. And uh, I think you will see, I think something is happening. I cannot tell too much, but if you're interested in links and, and the future of mixed reality, you should definitely contact me and uh, you know come and try the, the headset. Uh, because uh, very, very good things are going to, to happen in the next days and weeks. And I'm sure you're going to hear about that in the news uh, probably next month. So thank you very much. That's it for me. I hope I'm in time.